this saying, if you're gonna cry, I'll give you something to cry about. I just saw... I saw that? a woman with a baby in her lap. Yeah. While I, she was driving. <laughs> How disgusting could you be to smoke, not only in front of your child, but trap them in a vehicle with the windows up and just hotbox your poor child? The one thing that I found to be particularly trashy is putting soda or sweet tea in your baby's bottle. Parents who bring their small children to horror movies in the or to theaters that are like rated R movies, giving your kid the iPad to get them to shut up in public settings, also very trashy. Filming dance trend videos next to your child in the NICU or the ICU. Yeah, that's definitely trashy. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. If Nona looks weird, it's because she's stroking her bitch. The podcast dog's done. Oh my God. Well, Andrew. What? I'm going to censor it. It's fine. Andrew. Oh, she looks so. She's so happy yeah, down here on. on my feet. Hold on. Hold on. I know. I know. Hold on. So today. She just wants one attention, please. Today, we're talking about. Stuff. We're talking about trashy parenting. What makes a parent trashy? Not this dog does not make a parent trashy. <laughs> just just <laughs> trying to show you what uh, what Nona's doing with her hand. There she is. Yep. Oh, hello, hello. Perfect timing. All right. So a um, <clears throat> Instagram account called Mister Parenting posed the question: What makes a parent trasher, what screams trashy parenting? And it went completely viral a couple of weeks ago. So I just wanted to. So this is somebody that didn't already have a big account. This is the first thing that they ever did that I got traction. Know. I don't know, but that was the question that he asked. Okay. And I wrote down several of the comments and then I also added a few of my own. Okay. And you ready to get started? Sure. Okay. All right, what screams trashy parenting to you, Andrew? Um, being white trash. <laughs> Just period, the end, yeah. being white trash? Yeah. Okay, that's, okay. that's a, a very broad spectrum. Like smoking around your kids, okay, doing yes. drugs around your kids. Yep, all of those are on my list. Yeah. Okay, all right, so um, the video that actually went viral was a woman who stitched, am I saying that right? Stitched his video answering the question. So it like starts with him posting the video, asking the question, what screams um, okay. trashy parenting? And then she steps in and talks about a story. And the story is of her child inviting a classmate over for a sleepover for the very first time. She's never met these parents before, but... You know, her her child and that child are very good friends and play together on the playground and all of that. And she goes outside to introduce herself to the person in the vehicle bringing um, the new child over to a house that they have never been to before. To okay. as as any parent would, right? Right. Only the car starts backing away and leaves. And the child is then just left there with belongings. And mom says to child, oh, well, I was, was that your dad in the car? I, I was going to introduce myself to your dad. And I, you know, I, I wanted to have a little chat with him first before he left. Oh, that's not my dad, says the child. That's an Uber driver. <laughs> and she was just speechless that... Somebody would send their child to a stranger's home without ever meeting the parents in an Uber. Like it just, not only did the parent just blindly trust that the child was safe going to a stranger's home, but also blindly trusted that the Uber driver was a safe person to like, just mind-boggling. Would you ever 
put next the time children I, next in time, an Uber? No, next time I drop the kids off somewhere, I'm going to tell them to say that. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, that's that was my, the Uber drive. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll joke when I pull up to somebody's house, like a friend's house, and I'm, you know, we're carpooling or whatever. Say, your Uber XL is here because I drive a Suburban. And it's a joke. It's obviously not real. I'm nope. not ever going to be an Uber driver, <laughs> nope, I'm but I would never put my child in an Uber. I'm saying it. I am. I am the Uber driver. <laughs> you are the Uber driver now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that that's why the what, or probably one of the reasons why the video went viral because oh my god, just mind. That's gonna blown. be my response. That's gonna be my response to everything, even. Like after school activities and sports and stuff. When, Your Uber when driver I, has a, No, no, no. When a coach or something's like, oh, you must be oh, I'm so the and so's Uber dad. Driver? I'm going to say, no, I'm just the Uber driver and they pay me <laughs> extra to stay. Oh, my God. I'm totally going to do it. Oh, my God. I'm going to plan for it. And uh, when we get, when we end up having to get wireless I'm microphones, have awkward interactions with coaches and teachers. Of yeah, they're going to be so like. So we're really concerned, Miss Nona. Can you please have a meeting with us? Well, you're not a miss. You're Mrs. <laughs> I just mean like. Uh, well, if you're just the Uber driver, I'm not married to the Uber driver. Yeah, you are. <laughs> they don't know that until they ask the questions, though. I'm totally, I'm a hundred percent saying it every, every, cause it, it's come up a couple of times. The, the one guy, the grandpa or whatever at the yes. school yes. concert play, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Okay. Yeah. And at sporting events, when you're doing the other, we have uh, uh, kids activities that overlap on the same day at the same time. So we have to be in two places. We can't both be at both of their things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I mean, it's too late for this season, but. Next season. So next season. For sure. A hundred percent. Joy. Yep. Joy. Yep. I'm terrified. And then they're going to see you wearing or holding my hand. Like, that what? I'm having an affair with the Uber driver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's the perfect story set up. Uh, so I wrote down, obviously, some of the comments of um, people's input of what screams trashy parenting. And then I also <laughs> added mine. Um, one being smoking in the car with children. I always thought that growing up, like, how disgusting could you be to smoke not only in front of your child, but trap them in a vehicle with the windows up and just hot box your poor child? But vaping um, in that scenario is actually worse for the kid. Really? Yep. I don't, I know very little about vaping in general. The long-term effects from vaping from specifically the water vapor. I'm not even including if there's anything in it like THC or, or, um, oh my gosh, why can't I think what's in tobacco? Nicotine? Yeah. Nicotine. (laughs) Um, just the actual, the actual vapor itself. Okay can cause crack uh what's it called crackle lung um a couple other things <laughs> it's actually like crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah it's it it has been shown the the trends and and some meta-analysis and things like that of obviously we only have what like 10 or 20 years worth of data for this so far but um so far it's shown that children that were exposed to that early on in their life end up developing other conditions related to lungs cardiovascular system okay things like that so that makes sense yep it's not better no it's not better it's all bad it's all bad outside go on a walk are you telling people to quit vaping and go on a walk well yeah but i was actually saying good do it on the walk but yeah it's just oh (laughs) i mean i know i know people uh rich enough i know a couple of people actually who um, built, because they had like humidors in their basement. Okay. And they would build a room with uh, like a HEPA filter system that would, the room was uh, always negative pressure. Okay. So it's always pulling air into the room. That way they could smoke their cigars in their humidor and it would never go out into the house and it gets pumped outside. Okay. But that's only obviously if you're rich. Okay. Or you happen to buy a house that somebody put that in. And 
like cigars enough to have a human. It wouldn't only matter for cigars. Any kind of smoking, you could do it in there. Uh, Just, yeah, don't smoke inside, period, please. Just don't smoke at all, please. Um, Okay, so (laughs) one that I found particularly trashy when I became a new mom. I kind of noticed it before I became a mom myself, just like in nanny babysitting situations and being exposed to other parents. But obviously when you become a mom yourself, then you're around a lot of other moms, obviously. So one thing that I found to be particularly trashy is putting soda or sweet tea in your baby's bottle and then being mind boggled about how your child's teeth are rotten and disgusting. I would think that the obesity thing would be the bigger problem there. Oh, yeah, the baby for teeth sure, are going to fall out and be replaced. But, but the, these are people that will, here, go take a nap, go to bed. Here's your Mountain Dew and suck on that all night. No. I'm sent cast to bed with Mountain Dew. <laughs> Stop. We don't even buy Mountain Dew, guys. <laughs> no. Um, one commenter on that video wrote grocery shopping with a toddler at midnight. I have. I don't know that I've ever seen that because I've never been at the grocery store at midnight, but I've definitely been in situations where I have said out loud to you, it's nine o'clock at nine. That poor child should be in bed. Well, if you work a weird shift and your kid has napped all day and that's kind of their sleep pattern, or you know, there's people that will go and take their kid on a, like they'll fall asleep in the car seat, but they won't fall asleep in their crib or whatever. Mm -hmm. It could be that. It could be they work a weird shift and that's the only time they can go to the store and they don't have a sitter late at night. So are you defending children out after dark? No, I'm just saying it's, I think grocery shopping is completely different than going to the bar, to be clear. If you're taking your kid to the bar at midnight. One commenter wrote that as well. I've been to too many bars serving alcohol 21 plus. Because how, how would you feel if you were, you know, single momming it and it was the first kid and you didn't have anything, and but you had to go to the store because you had to get groceries, you didn't have anybody? You're not going to leave them at the house. Yeah, but I wouldn't go at midnight. If you didn't have a choice, I'm saying. I would figure out a different If time. you didn't have a choice, you need formula or something for tomorrow. Say. It's not like these people see those people every day. They don't see them there every day at midnight. Actually, somebody followed up with that comment, just go to Walmart and you'll see them everywhere. Then some people of Walmart need to post (laughs) those people. Instead of posting people in the little half around cart scooter things. It's 10 p.m. Here's this child running around the hallways of Walmart. Yep. Here comes Squeakums. All right. Uh, smoking in the car with children, obviously on the list. Um, not restraining your babies slash children in car seats. I've seen this also driving on MLK, which is a highway here. I just saw... I saw I a woman with a baby in her lap Yeah, while I, she was driving. I saw that here recently, and I'm trying to remember where where I was going. It was here in town, and they were sitting on the lap of the driver with a car seat in view and nothing in it. Yeah, I just, I've never understood this. Like, that just, that that makes my blood boil. The first thing that came to my mind is the scene from Too Fast, Too Furious. What scene? They uh, fabricated these, the seats, the passenger seats in their cars. Okay to eject the passenger out of the door. So they would hit a button, the door would pop open, and they would eject the chair. So eject the baby? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what would happen. They would go through the windshield more than likely, but, and that's what it's called, it's called an ejection. But um, what's his name, Tyrese? I think it's Tyrese. When he hits hits his button, he's like laughing at the guy, and he's like, ejecto cito, cuz, and dude shoots out, like lands in the water. Okay. Uh, using the F word in front of children was a huge one. Mm. So we're, that's, that's, we're officially trashy parents because we have dropped the F word. 
Oh, you're so in scared of words. In front of the children. You're so scared of words. Uh, eating fast food or junk food or having soda daily. I, That's, I definitely... I, I, did you see my post the other day? No. What post? I posted on Facebook and on Twitter. I said the only people keeping McDonald's in business are fat and ugly people. So then I was getting ready to say, <laughs> yeah, the people who stop at McDonald's like for dinner every night and yeah. then wonder why their child... I is, had... I had like two, maybe three people defended it. And they're like, well, I like this one thing from there. And I only get it once in a while. I'm like, <laughs> maybe you go look in the mirror. And that follows up with the next one. Obese children. Yeah. Just obese children in general means that you're a trashy parent, apparently. It is the parent's fault, almost 100%, unless they have some sort of medical condition that, like if they're diabetic mm -hmm. and you know you can't afford the insulin, or maybe you can, but you can't afford, you know, the dietary regimen and everything like that that goes with it. But there's programs, I'm sure. Maybe not great, but you would, you would, you can tell, you can tell the difference if all of the children look like that versus one of the children look like that. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm clearly the child is making poor decisions potentially independently at school or at their friends or sneaking stuff in addition to their normal meal and that hasn't been as long figured out, worked out. If the out. parent is enabling that behavior, then yeah. that makes them trashy. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, giving children melatonin slash a sleep aid nightly to get your child to go to sleep. I can agree with this. Yeah, there was a definitely a huge wave about 10 years ago of, oh, go have your melatonin gummy. Why not just give them cocaine like the old days? That's an upper, not a downer. Joking. <laughs> or give your, what is it called, a thimble? What were thimbles even used for? What is that? Why is it in Monopoly and what is it? Oh my God, Andrew, it's to protect your thumb when you're sewing. How would I know that? Because you apparently never sewed in your life. Why would, why would that be a Monopoly? And why would people fill a thimble with alcohol and that be their solution to getting or rubbing it on their gums or whatever just a thimble full or they would rub it directly like on the yeah but i'm saying you know? like where did why did thimble come because into it's it? such a small amount do you want a thimble i don't other than our monopoly game that has one in it does it you know what i'm actually questioning does it have one because we played what mm -hmm. two three months ago cash beat everybody yeah. Cash, I don't remember. Cash play now. The youngest kid. Because we played we played the legit way and nobody was allowed to leave. Nobody was allowed to throw a fit about it, anything. And he went from getting dragged and losing badly. He like owned everything yeah. at the end. He just he it happened to, he happened to start rolling and only landing on free spaces and you know, chances where the card, you know, was collect money from everybody mm -hmm. else in the game and all this other stuff. And yeah, he ended up, it got to a point where he was untouchable. It was just, <laughs> untouchable. Yeah. Which is the opposite of what untouchables typically are. They're usually the pores. But I was saying like, what? yeah, the untouchables are the pores. I thought untouchables were the rich. No. What? Let's ask. Let's ask because I'm pretty sure. Who were the untouchables? Were they the rich or the poor? The untouchables were actually a group of lawmen, specifically oh. a group of prohibition agents. They were kind of like a special. I'm talking about way back in the day before the U.S. existed. Okay, now we're talking. The word untouchable has a few different meanings, and depending on the context, it could refer to the wealthy or the poor. Do you know which time period you're thinking about? 1500s. In that case, we're talking about India around the year 1500. Back then, the term untouchable had a very specific meaning. It referred to people at the very bottom of the Hindu caste system. It was a system yeah, that basically ranked people as 
Okay, I was. <laughs> That's not, where I know it from. Okay, I was thinking of more uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, and the elite society, which she said on the second description depends on the situation. It could be. So I think we're both right in this. Because which one do you guys know? <laughs> which one? Which one did you guys learn, and which one do you associate it with? That okay. that will determine who wins this episode. Okay. I had never heard what she just described and using it in that reference. I've only mm. ever known it. Recently, recently people use it for the rich, but I learned it as the poor. But that's all I've ever known, so it's not a recent thing. Because, again, I was thinking you were talking about... No. Okay, anyways. No. Um, parents who send their children to school without a coat or dirty clothes on but they themselves are dressed and clean. Sometimes the kid won't listen to you. So, okay, if this is Go a change. once you wore those yesterday. in a while thing, yeah. or the kid forgot the coat at home or in the car and got out at school drop off. I've totally had to go back to school to go deliver my kid's coat. With these random pop-up storms that we've had over the last month or two, I actually, kind of felt bad for Cooper because of how far he has to walk sometimes to get to the car when he gets out of school. And, Cause you go to school and it's a clear day and the forecast mm -hmm. says it's not going to rain. And then you go and pick him up and just all of a sudden there's a cloud and it's just pouring right yeah. on the school. <laughs> like, well, Whoops. I guess you're showering now. Yep. Wearing pajamas in public slash allowing your child to wear whatever they want. I think we're talking about Chloe here. <laughs> Chloe and I have had a, a long-standing headbutt on this that I grew up in the era of you dress to impress, right? We've talked about this. Sure. That you present your best self at school because you're in a learning environment, you're not a slob kebab. What you want to wear at home, fine. But when you're in public, you need to be presentable. Right? Yeah. So this is an issue with one of the children. I had to wear. I didn't have a choice. It wasn't uniform. But the program that I was in in high school, we were required to wear business casual every day at a minimum. We had really strict um, dress code all through middle school and high school. We didn't. It was there were, it was so strict. There were a couple things. We did have uniforms for gym class in middle school and high school. We didn't even change out for gym. We had to. It wasn't it wasn't a choice. You had to wear the correct colors as well. It didn't have to be wow. school bought with the school logo, but okay. it had to be the correct color pants and the correct color shirt. Okay, yeah. Meanwhile, everybody was doing PE and jeans. No, nope, we had to wear actual gym clothes. Okay. I remember one time um, because And if you I didn't had, have it, they gave you like the like practice uniform stuff from one of the sports, depending on boy or girl and you know, what like fits you. So if you didn't have the shirt or whatever that day, or if you had a shirt that wasn't acceptable because it had other words or something on it, then they would give you like one of the mesh practice jerseys from football or something along those lines. You had to wear that for practice. I remember one day when I had to do the mile run ninth grade year <clears throat> at my high school, I was wearing a um, sports top. It was like a top that had a built-in sports bra. And then I had like a zip up athletic jacket over it. And the school resource officer saw the Nike check mark right on the chest of the top that I was wearing underneath, which, mind you, it like was cut to here. Like there was no nothing revealing or anything. It was a full top. And then I was wearing a jacket because our shoulders always had to be covered. And even for the mile run, our shoulders had to be covered. And the school resource officer made me unzip my jacket to prove that I wasn't just wearing a sports bra 
And I just, I still remember to that day that. Can't do that these days. You would need like the school nurse to be there with you to make, prove that it wasn't yeah, sexual I just, assault. I just had to unzip and show that, no, it is a fully covering top. It's not just a sports bra. It's, and then, oh, okay, you can continue on. <laughs> you might be one of those people that can go back and get somebody fired. It's the, the climate for that these days. You can say this happened and I remember it. And Whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, that's like people, the least of the issues that occurred. People make money from less. Again, that is like the least of the issues that occurred. Um, anyways, parents who bring their small children to horror movies in the or to theaters that are like rated R movies. I have said this like every single time I've ever gone to a rated R movie. Why did they bring their baby? Why? Yeah, baby is different, but you said small children. Small children, baby, synonymous. No. Yeah. No. The child does not need to be in that loud environment, disrupting their sensory. When did the first Saw movie come out? Do you know? Um, 2003, maybe? I'm just guessing. What about, well, Chucky goes way back, doesn't it? I don't know. The first Saw movie came out in 2004. I was very, very close. Chucky. Let's see when, when Chucky came out. No, I'm not looking for the most recent one. Wait, the three seasons, what? There's a Chucky TV show mm-hmm. now too? Mm-hmm. Chucky, how do I find movies? Images, news, videos, shadow. While he's looking for that. Hitting children in general. Slapping kids in public, especially babies. Imagine what they do in private. Wait, isn't the first one called Child's Play? Is that what I it don't is? Know. Never saw any of those. Okay, sorry. Which yeah, it is called Child's I, Play, 1988. So before I was even born, um, which I strongly agree. Just you should never lay your hands on your child, public or private. Definitely think that we constitutes. Got raised, we got raised being spanked, so. I think that constitutes being a trashy parent. Well, I'm sorry. When I don't think I know anybody that didn't get spanked growing up. Did you know anybody that didn't other than yourself? Um, yeah, my mom was with all other natural, gentle parenting moms since they all had very similar mindsets. Well, you're and in school. I was not talking about school. I don't. That's I don't. Said, did I you have, know anybody? I have no idea about people in school and whether they were spanked or not. But I know. You never hung out with friends and they got in trouble and got spanked while you were around. I didn't hang out with anybody from school. Okay, you didn't ever hang out with anybody <laughs> that ever got spanked. Correct. Okay. Um. When parents buy their kids guns and they shoot up their school. That's what one commenter wrote, obviously pertaining to. There's far more people that buy their kids firearms and they practice safety with them. They keep them locked up and they know the rules. There's way, way more than those. than And the, the majority of these school shootings, however you want to define them, happen from the kid stealing, acquiring, taking from somebody else and it wasn't theirs to begin with. There's probably been, I don't know what, one recently. Right, that's obviously what the commenter was referring to. But that situation, the more the dad told the story, um, the more you could tell that he was in the wrong to begin with because of all the red flags and the conversations that have been had about their kid in school prior and him making threats. He bought the gun after he had been making threats. Dad fucked up in that one. That's clear as day. Correct. Um, When parents yell at their kids to shut up or call them names. In public or at all? Both. And I agree. I 
do not allow my children to even say, shut up. I know somebody that would use um, like code words. Okay. Like be specific. Um, Brittany, I remember she would yell at, at their, her son, Tiger, when they were doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. And it was just code, like the kid knew that that meant something else. But it probably didn't mean like, I'm going to beat your ass when we get home. I don't know. Do you know? It probably meant, it, it probably is more just to snap your child out of the moment with an offhand word. Well, it's not offhand. It's something that. I understand that, but it's, it makes you think of something else. I don't know. Not me. If if somebody's yelling something, I'm immediately going to be like, okay, what is that code for? <laughs> Especially if the kid responds did it, to did it. Did it make him stop? Yeah. I believe so. Do you believe that when they got home, she uh, spanked him or? No idea. Punished him in any way? No idea. Just hearing the word and this one scenario, I'm going back to what I said of, I think it's just to snap him out of the moment and just get him to redirect his energy. Sorry, I thought that was a tornado siren for a second. I was like, I thought we didn't have those. Somebody like revving their engine yeah. or something stupid, like a fart can. No, it was a motorcycle of some kind. Um. This saying, if you're going to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah, I've never, I have never been on My board for that. My parents said that. I have never been on board for that. My parents said that for sure. I do not approve. Or something do not approve. in line with that. Very trashy. Very trashy. Threatening your children. Oh, very trashy. Yeah. Um, giving your kid the iPad to get them to shut up in public settings. Also very trashy. Well, I think the majority of kids having free range and access to electronics at all is trashy. So even giving it to them as a reward or to stop them from doing something is still in line with that. It's the unfettered access to stuff, being able to do things, because we've talked about this before, unless you go and use every app and service and website and whatever that they could potentially use, you don't know what avenues other people have to get access to them. Agreed. So they could go to, they could normally- You were telling me about the Roblox dude. You wanna tell them, I'm sure they've seen the video. Oh, no, we can tell that story. But there's even other crazier stories. Like you can, there's there's websites that you can go to where you don't even need to sign in. You could have conversations with people and, you know, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. Because they could go and look something up. Where What do kids like me do for this? And then it pops up and it's like, oh, this is a friendly place. And then you're having this back and forth conversation with somebody you think is like you. Mm -hmm. And then they're like a, a cyber stalker or well, do you know, you pedophile. Well, AIM? Yeah. Age, sex, location. Yeah. I will always remember that. The chat and rooms and yeah, stuff that you can go yeah. into. Yahoo Messenger as well. Oh, I didn't ever have that. Same and I, thing. I didn't have AIM. It was just when I would go to friends' houses for sleepovers. Like, that was the thing. You just stayed up until midnight and, like, trolled people in chat rooms in we, eighth grade. We, um, by we, I mean my neighbor and I, um, found one of, like, the password crack tools and we would put it on a floppy drive and we would go to our other friends' houses and steal their passwords and then log into their accounts and do stuff. Okay. So if it's, See, a, if it's easy enough for a kid to do that, I imagine how easy it is for an adult, an adult to do it. Agreed. So you set up an account and by you, I'm saying another kid. Right. And then your parent who is potentially doing stuff but doesn't want to do it to their own child because then they would get caught. Now you have access to other kids and they think you're a kid. Okay, that was way too manipulative for me to follow. That's, why do you think I'm so crazy about 
electronics why you, and con- why are you so manipulative is that what you just no, said no because that's what i heard no leaving your kids in the car no matter how short a time unattended yeah because you don't actually know how long you're going to be inside for perfect example and i've told you the story before i don't know if it's ever been told on here um a guy that rick and i had worked with he uh worked at ford and sold these people like a brand new escape or something right, eight, something yes. years you ago told me this story, yes. And it was right when a lot of manufacturers were transitioning to long range, like think more like modern day, um, what was what in the Chevy, the OnStar, OnStar service where you can remote start with OnStar. Ford had their version. I don't know if it's still called, but I think it's called Ford Blue. Um, and these other things. And it was sold. So it's still, it was still new technology at the time. And people assumed that when you remote start it, it just stays on forever. But there was a time limit because the EPA, whatever else, you know, we don't want vehicles running twenty four seven. Especially, say you accidentally. I know mine shuts off at fifteen minutes. Say you accidentally remote start it from a long distance and you don't know it's running. Now you just ran your entire right, tank. Right, exactly. So there's a lot of reasons not to let it run forever. And you don't want the battery to die and not be able. Your to battery it wouldn't up. die. It wouldn't. No, your alternator charges your battery while your car's running. It'd do the opposite. It would charge your battery. <laughs> so, anyways, the point of that story was the these people bought the vehicle from him, and the same day or within a day or two, went to the mall or something. And they had their dogs in the car, so they got out. They remote started it, went into the mall. When they came out, their dogs were dead. So they were in the inside for like two hours, and so they tried to sue him and the dealership, saying that he told them that it would stay on forever. Next yeah. time next time Rick is around or you see him, ask him the story because he knows more of the details than I do. Okay. I wasn't there. But, yeah, like, it's not a feel-good story for sure. Nobody's in the right there. Nobody, you're not getting your dog back even if you won the lawsuit. What happened with the lawsuit? I don't, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You'll have to ask Rick. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. Man. I can't imagine, but yeah, definitely don't leave your children in the car. doesn't matter if it's like running in for a UPS return or mm-hmm. whatever, but it's not I used it. to when- You never know. My uh, Jeep that I had, that was the Overland, that had all the crazy high-end features for, especially for that year, for 2008. Um, when I would go in somewhere, even if I, you know, nobody's with me, no animal, obviously I don't have kids of my own. I would still remote start it, but I would crack the window in case I was in longer because I knew that it didn't stay on forever, but I didn't want the vehicle to be hot. And I'm like, I'm just running in real quick and I want the AC to still be on. But in case I don't come out, assuming it's not going to rain, crack the windows a little bit. Mm-hmm. So when I come back out, even if the car's off, it shouldn't be hot. Gotcha. Because I had leather seats and all that. You didn't want to. I have leather seats too. It's not that bad, Andrew. These were. They are like a... <laughs> They're like a dark, like red, like blood red, almost like beige. You're the one who picked it out, Andrew. Yeah, because it was a, for what it was, it was a pretty nice car. Okay. Leashes on children. That's funny. That one. There's been times when I have seen people that can't control their kids and I want to tell them to get a leash for their kids. So I I have that next on there. Allowing your child to run wild in public, no control over your child or their behavior. Mm -hmm. So it's both are trashy. Putting a leash on your child or letting them run rampant in like a restaurant. See, I feel bad when the kids are with me and one of them like they're following me the little ducklings in the line through the store and one of them kind of strays to the side a little bit and they're like following, but like doing one of these numbers. Right, and like you know, looking around. Tucked back in the line, but people they're, are. They're, they're, just to be clear, they're not wild. No. They're just. Oh. But I'm saying, I'm saying to your point of that being trashy, I feel bad when I'm having to say, hey, oh, excuse me. And, you know, come on, pay attention. People are trying to walk on the other side. You don't need to be hogging the whole thing. You're like a little four foot tall person. <laughs> A female with more than one baby daddy constitutes as trashy. Okay. How do you feel about that? 
if you're like 19, sure. But if you're 19 with multiple baby daddies yeah. or 19, stop, then meet somebody else and then like start a new life with them. That doesn't constitute as trash. What, it, what are, which are you saying? No, I'm saying if, if you're like 19 and you have kids with multiple people and you've never actually been in a serious or stable relationship, that's one thing. Well, I had one baby daddy. Obviously, I was married. Mm -hmm. But that is a question that I have gotten more in my entire adult life. Oh, you have four kids? All with the same dad? As if that's mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah, all with the same dad? <laughs> is it any of your business anyways? They want it to be. Like, what? <laughs> yes, all with the same dad. And then I get so like, <sighs> exactly how I am right now of just like, it's none of your business. But then you know me of like in awkward situations, I like laugh it off. You have to flip it back on them. What about you? You're still with your same wife? No, no. Flip it, <laughs> flip it back on them and say, are yours all from the same dad? <laughs> are you, Cause that's are the you and your siblings all from the same dad? No, no. They're, they're kids. Are right. all of your kids they, from one I person? I, a lot of them, a lot of the people who ask this question are older, like 65 plus retired. So then it is weird to them. Because they've watched where their their generation, their parents, never left their relationship, never did anything. And then the 70s through the last couple decades, mm -hmm. people ran wild doing whatever. And then they see somebody now that's been with only one person that has multiple kids. And they're like, what? Are we going back to how it used to be? Maybe. I it's exactly what it is. I don't think in every situation, but maybe. Exactly no, I is. think it's just people are nosy exactly and have no filter. It is. <sighs> Filming dance trend videos next to your child in the NICU or the ICU. Yeah, that's definitely trashy. I saw something worse than that. Oh, God. Somebody on Twitter reshared. Um, it was like. It, so I saw the person that I follow commented on the people with the, what do you think? Okay. Um, and they were asking what should happen to the mom or something along those lines. She was twerking on her like four or five year old son. On? On, on, and on video. Yeah. Like teaching him how to like hold her hips and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it was one of those accounts for the non video audience. I'm speechless. Yeah. I have no words. Yeah. I, I can't even comprehend that is trashy. Mm -hmm. That is very trashy. And I feel like it's more than trashy borderline abusive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sexual assault. Yeah. Uh, if it was if it was anybody other than the parent it wouldn't even be in question right, to be sexual right. assault so oh that's your aunt slap some cuffs on her yeah. that's your babysitter yeah. hell no yeah. so same thing uh, well that was my last on the list but I figured I'd pull up a reddit thread too you don't have very we, much time so you want to hurry oh okay if we wanted to, but we don't have to. You only have five minutes. Okay. Um, Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. Tell your grandma about this. Maybe she'll like it that we're, we have old school, um, what do you call it? We're not trashy. <laughs> no. They will not like us at all. You never know. Somebody, somebody would like this. We have somebody randomly commented the other day and said, I like your content on YouTube and I was like, thanks. And they never said anything back after that. <laughs> I had somebody, somebody come in on rumble and they come in on two videos on rumble 
Okay. And they were like super positive. And I was reading it like, what's the, what's, what's the, the catch here? Yeah. Cause it was the first person that ever had commented on rumble uh -huh. that wasn't a spammer. So all of our videos get five to 10 spam comments, but so rumble's still really terrible about that. It's still really like early YouTube days, terrible mm -hmm. where it doesn't, there's not really a good spam filter but you can set keyword filters yourself that automatically hide any comments so you don't have to interact with it. Okay. It shows that somebody tried to comment. So if somebody's looking at your video and they'll see a commenter's name mm -hmm. and then it's just blank. They'll see like the commenter's name and the time but it's, there's nothing there and it automatically does that. So I put like SEO and marketing and all, that, all those other terms right, right. that I know that they're gonna say like I can help you grow your channel. And I, I automatically filter out all of those words. Okay. So they never, you know, pop up. So this guy, or I'm assuming it's a guy, commented and he was like really positive and he had like, oh, I bet you that's where the I thing was. I know it was. That's why I couldn't find it on YouTube. Rumble? Yeah. Okay. So he commented on that video and he commented on another one and it was actually engaging. He actually consumed the videos. Okay. It wasn't just, hey, I'm here commenting. Right, right. He actually, or they, whatever, actually watched the content of the video and had a lot of good back and forth conversation. They actually listened to what we said and said, here's my Which opinion. Which episode was this? Um, you good don't question. remember. No. Well, right. the one, I think the one was the pet peeve one, maybe. Okay. I don't know. It's pulled up. I don't have Rumble on my phone, so I don't know how long that would take me to pull All it right. up. All right, well, I, I pull it up, and uh, we don't have time to go over it because I have a call in one minute. So I guess this episode is over. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as you said, like, subscribe. Click all the links. Click all the links. Follow. Join, follow, subscribe. Get an insurance quote with me. You know, Do that. The usual. Yes. South Carolina, North Carolina. Sometimes Florida. Sometimes Florida, only sometimes because Florida sucks. <laughs> um, let us know who you'd like to see as a guest on the show. And oh. if you have somebody that you know okay. that you think would be a good guest on the show and want to send them our way, okay, make an introduction, you know, in the comments. Or, oh, okay, okay. So we, ha we have forms. On so our, slide into our DMs is what you're no, saying. So, well, that depends. But we have forms. <laughs> we have forms on the website where people can – suggest stuff like that okay, so okay. you have to visit the website to find this we oh, have okay. the sponsor inquiry stuff is on there we have the general like question comment oh yeah whatever. sponsor us yeah do that do that yep thank you goodbye, goodbye. maybe the mouse isn't on that's why i always reach over so i'm dragging this on there we go. <laughs> that's why you guys always see me reach over and i have to click so because the mouse hibernates if i don't move it for long enough goodbye Bye.